morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining me. This is the DAX Open. My name is Russell Shaw, Senior Market Specialist at FXCM, and uh, my email address is rshaw at fxcm.com. Today is Thursday, and it is the 4th of November, 2021. Just going to go ahead and bring up our high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments, and then I'll bring up our commentaries disclaimer. Right, let's just bring up the commentaries disclaimer here. And just finally, our uh, sources, which would be uh, market scope. All right, let's uh, go ahead and uh, bring up the chart. Um, I wanted to show you the uh, triple moving average. Uh, but before we get into the analysis, let's just go through over the headline that we need to know because it's. Um, it's been a busy um, 24 hours, so to speak, and then we've got the Bank of England uh, later today as well. Uh, hey, Howard, morning to you. Nice to have you on the webinar. All right, so um, so the global market's likely to just uh, mull over the comments from the <clears throat> excuse me from the U.S. Federal Reserve. Um, it's now going to start the tapering program. It's effectively going to be uh, purchasing uh, assets at a declining rate. Um, and that is going to decline by $15 billion per month. And so we're looking to end stimulus um, in terms of the quantitative easing program. We're looking at the middle of 2022. Um, the um, uh, they did leave it open for for, for change. Um, you know, the, the Fed chair um, reiterated that um, they're going to have some sort of flexibility. Um, but uh, the point is, um, they've started the, the tapering. Um, the good thing about it, I think, it was a fairly balanced. Um, uh, but it's not the right word. It was, it was measured. In other words, there was no deviation from previous communications to us, and the market uh, generally reacted fairly well. Um, shares in um, the Asia region um, were um, were fairly um, steady, and um, the U.S. markets all powered powered upwards. The UK is going to have a big day today with the, the Bank of England. Is there going to be a rate hike or isn't there? Consensus is that there is not going to be a rate hike. I'm not so sure about that, but we'll wait and see. In fact, I've looked at a few different calendars and uh, not all the calendars agree on how many uh, members are going to be dissenting. So uh, it's, a, um, I think, a very um, important decision. And it... And the actual um, forecasts are, although for a, to to maintain, uh, I guess underlying that, uh, you know, there is some sort of a debate going on. In terms of earnings, uh, Credit Suisse, BMW, Commerce Bank, uh, Deutsche Post, Tate and Lau, um, Sockgen also, and. Um, so there's a busy day of uh, earnings out of uh, Europe. Let's just go through to our charts here. So I'm going to just start off with weekly. Um, we usually we usually take a look at this, and I was thinking, well, maybe we can get some more information. And uh, I thought the triple moving average actually does give us um, that extra bit of information. You can see that the shorter term green moving average has now crossed above this. Um, intermediate medium term orange moving average right there and we've got now the um, the short term of the intermediate term and we've got the intermediate term on top of the longer term that's a bullish uh, development it's what we call a bullish stack now the um, key is to look for angle and separation so if i just move this over to there, you can see how the leading averages started sort of spreading and went out like a fan. And uh, that's what we want to see happen here. 
because that would uh, suggest that there is a trend. Why would it suggest there's a trend? Because moving averages are trend following indicators. So if there's no trend, they're going to give us uh, whipsaw signals, false signals. So the fact that we've got this um, development here, I think, is um, important, and we'll just uh, um, keep an eye on how the um, how the um, um, how the, uh, the DAX tracks. Let's just go through to um, our zone analysis on the daily, and um, this is actually sort of unfolding uh, very pleasingly in terms of the analysis. It, it doesn't always happen, but what we uh, suggested initially was, okay, we're in zone one. Okay, we've got a reference candle reversal here. Okay, we've got a reference candle reversal here. They're both bullish. Uh, we've got a, uh, a stochastic that's starting to expand. Uh, in other words, the volatility was, uh, um, there was an indication that volatility was starting to pick up. So the, the next stage was, well, want the bottom to just start playing catch up to start moving in that northeast direction, but it's starting to do that. Does it guarantee anything? Of course not. But if there is going to be a, a swing, this this is what needs to happen. Now it's all about um, the price holding the bush area and stochastic maintaining above the 80 level, which it's doing a really good job of. In terms of being overbought, we're not quite there yet. Okay, so there's still some room. Now, um, given the um, the bullish daily chart, let's just go down to our hourly and take a look at our hourly. So one, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. We put this question mark in yesterday. Well, we can kind of draw it up, and there's the next one, two. Okay, so again, it's just one of the one of those trends that tends to cooperate, and, and we all know that this is not always the case. Um, so what we look for now? Well, the um, RSI is overbought. Okay, that's an important point um, for the um, for our methodology, the only reason the only reason I put the RSI into the um, you know, into the system is because it's a much better measure of excess than stochastic. Stochastic can't measure the excess. The formula doesn't make um, the uh, measure of excess possible, whereas uh, RSI does. Well, we, it does look we're going into this um, extreme position. Um, we're over 80 now. If you go back over here, you can see just because it's overbought doesn't necessarily mean there is going to be a immediate sell-off. What it does suggest, though, is that um, the oscillator needs to normalize. Okay, it can't stay um, above 80 for very long. It can't can't stay below 20 for very long. And um, the um, idea here is it is going to um, normalize at some state. I'm not sure when, but if it normalizes, it's either going to be through a pullback or a sideways movement. So what does this effectively tell us? Well, it gives us an idea that the risk-reward relationship is starting to skew. So now risk is starting to um, um, increase. And I think that is something that we need to just be aware of because uh, risk is, of course, um, what we've got to protect ourselves against, stock losses, money management. According to our methodology, the, um, we really started moving here and we started moving in the stochastic here. And the idea here is, um, okay, so we get perhaps a pullback, perhaps if this normalizes, and then we would see, well, is this the dip that we can exploit? Is this the dip that we can exploit? Okay, so I think that you've just got to be mindful that we are a little frothy here. Yes, the momentum is really good, and as long as that momentum holds, well, then there's a good chance of appreciation. But ask yourself this question, um, is it worth taking the risk? We are slightly heightened at these levels. So um, 
just keep that in mind. All right. Um, are there any questions with uh, the um, analysis you've done? If so, just go ahead and type those through. Um, I haven't been able to get onto the US Open uh, this week. I'm going to uh, try uh, for sure this afternoon. So uh, otherwise, we'll um, start them up again from next week. All right. I don't see any comments. Just another, I'll wait another 10, 15 seconds. All right, let's let's uh, let's um, conclude at this point. And uh, if anybody needs to um, get hold of me, just send me an email, rshaw at fxm.com. Thanks very much, guys.